Hello and welcome to this game of Dota 2. We are watching Zenith taking on Neolution G7. We are going to see the AMD Premier League, the Season 2, round of 16. So 16 teams made it to the playoffs, 8 got invited, 8 made it through the regional qualifiers. And uh, Zenith is the invited team, Neolution is the qualified team. We'll have a team of 3 to provide you with coverage, one of tho those 3 is me. The other 2 are uh, Music, is my stats man for today, so you'll see stats inside the game pop up and that's him doing that and the other one is my co-caster Skim. Skim welcome back and uh, fast draft from these two teams. As always from Zenith as always they really one of those teams that just immediately press the button like guys come on this is just drafting let's 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 hurry through that and picking almost their signature heroes until they pick up the shaker. Um, I mean Docs here Visage Really, signature heroes for them. Ice, um, most likely. Or, no, actually, it's Freedom who plays the Visage, and um, they have multiple heroes, uh, multiple player, multiple players that can play the Docs here. But Earth Shaker, is this going to be an aggressive Charlie? It looks like it could, it be. could we, be. We have seen a lot of Earth Shakers uh, from Zenith also to be helping on the tri lane, like just a duo lane. Um, in Dota One, it used to even be Windrunner Earth Shaker lanes. Oh yeah, I've been told so. Um, Maybe maybe we're gonna take a step back in time and see that one. I do like their shaker pickup though, and we know that Zenith is an aggressive team, so I'm sure they are able to work it in in a way that is gonna be entertaining to watch. They are of course an entertaining team overall. We're gonna see an alchemist, bat rider, and two jungle heroes banned by Zenith, so that's the Chen and Enchantress out of the pool. The Io and the, and the Shadow Demon banned out by Neil Lucian on the first two. And then the Razor and the Life Sealer, the last two banned out of there. Razor, of course, a bit of a counter towards the OD in mid. Actually, a hero that can win mid against OD. One of the few heroes. Um, it's Razor and Life Sealer that can win mid against OD. So, also Life Sealer banned out. So, Neolution keeping their OD safe in that mid lane. Let's see what they are gonna pick up next, because that is the question. Nyx Assassin is already there, support. We still have a Rubik in the pool if they wanna go for an extra setup support, but Nyx Assassin is already considered to be one of those supports that can set up disables. So, perhaps we're gonna have one of those disabling heroes instead. Yeah, something like a Lena to follow it up. I mean, you have the Astral Imprisonment and the Impale to set up quite easy stuns and it's a lot of burst damage as well. But no, they still go for the Rubik. There's still, there's great spells to steal. Uh, the Visage Familiar, Soul Assumption. The Fisher is really nice on Rubik because you have instant cast time. So an even better Earth Shaker if they play it right. And of course, Vacuum, Roar, quite easy spells to steal or at least big spells to steal. So the Rubik makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and of course, I mean, it's fairly easy to steal a roar from a Beastmaster. Well, actually, unless you're roared yourself, then it's all of a sudden a lot tougher, because normally Beastmaster will throw his axes out afterwards. Uh, it is fairly easy, however, to steal a Fisher from the Earthshaker. He doesn't really use his other abilities that often. So yeah, he has he's going to have a good game, I think. I think so, indeed. And the Illusion, yeah. again, using reserve time to go about their draft. Zenith, indeed. I mean, they're just picking fast. And of course, they're also able to make use of the bonus time that the Illusion uses. So they're n they're not going to be too sad that Neolution is the one to sacrifice their time, also for Zenith's thinking time. And there is the Weaver, so an OD Weaver combination. We still have a Train Protector in the pool, just saying. I'm not expecting it because we are still missing uh, a lane, basically, for ne Neolution. They could run Weaver on the mid, or sorry, on the off lane or on the safe lane, depending on how they're going to be uh, running it. And they still need uh, either an off lane or a safe lane carry, or just a normal off laner. Maybe a clockwork or something like that, but we'll find out. Uh, Nature's Prophet gets banned, so that's an offlaner out of the pool. And the Illusion ban out the Luna because Zenith also misses their carry. We still have a Gyrocopter in the pool though, and I think that Zenith likes that one as well. Yeah, I can see them picking up a Gyrocopter. They would have a great amount of teamfight ability, a Vacuum, Echo Slam, or Fisher, and then the Gyrocopter, but I wouldn't be surprised if Zenith went something more mid-game oriented at this point, because I think they can. They're really one team that likes to put up pressure a lot early on, and they really like the mid-game. And Oh my god. Here it is. Here seeker. it is. I didn't call it, but it's still... It's wow. still a Zenith-like hero. Yeah, it really is, but it's amazing. I'm not just sure why yet, but we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll see uh, how they're gonna run this. I mean, I like Bloodseeker not really that much, uh, but in terms of where I want him to lane, I like him laning in the mid. 
because he needs his levels fast, because if he gets a fast level 6, he's able to res everybody with that. And that means that who is going to be taking the farm on the trail lane? And there's a Kalinx picked up by the Illusion, so that will be their hero to go for, for the safe lane probably. They could go run an off lane Weaver or off lane Kalinx. Either way would work, and the other going for the uh, aggressive trail lane, I think. Yeah, could make a, could be potential. I think, I, yeah, I agree. I think it's going to be an aggressive trail lane. Mm, or might be. Um, I actually think that Bloodseeker could also be played on the safe lane. Um, just because. But, in, in, but, but the Zen support's there? Ah, I think Zenith might go for aggressive himself with the Docks here. It's just speculation at this point. It could um, happen. It could definitely yeah. happen. Let's see uh, who will be playing a what. Look at that. It is Ice, Ice, Ice on the Bloodseeker. I'm gonna guess that Ice, Ice, yeah. Ice is yeah, uh, the draft ice, ice, ice. in the draft. Indeed. So, uh, yeah, Bloodseeker picked up by Ice Ice Ice. The other Ice will take on the Airshake of this game. Yamate on the Beastmaster, X Freedom on the Visage, and XY will take on the Darkseer of this game. Yeah, and over on the Radiant side, the seemingly underdogs, depending on... I expect the votes will be showing that they will are considered underdogs. It's Leo on the OD, Kenji playing the Weaver, Shoti on the Klings, Kelly on the Nyx Assassin support, and on the other support, the Rubik, it's BR Cat. Yeah, and of course, uh, you can indeed vote, so exclamation mark vote, and then the team of your choice. Uh, it is case sensitive, so make sure you write it down properly. And uh, just uh, in the Twitch chat, please. And we're gonna have another Elgato in the, in the thing. This time. Really popular. Yep. I mean, it's a cat. Look, it's a cute cat at that. Click at, click at him and look at his portrait, it's like... Yeah. It's like Puss in Boots. That's the model. That's where the model must be from, almost. He really looks like it, yeah. yeah. I want to give him all my food. Just, <laughs> Just because you can. Yeah. yeah but I really need one as well. Yeah, by the way, this is Zenith uh, picking up their items very fast and going bottom. So they're looking for an initiation. Of course, having an Earthshaker with Fisher, that's one of the most powerful level 1 spells that you can ask for. The level one potential is pretty big. Also, with freedom, maybe picking up that uh, that grave chill, making sure that they can chase, can get some extra right clicks in. That could be potential for first blood. So we'll see if they manage to find that inside the radiant jungle. Um, by the way, for people wondering what you're watching, I will tell you you are watching the AMD Premier League. We are in the second season. We are still in the round of 16 of the playoff brackets. Eight teams got invited, eight teams made it through the qualifiers. Uh, Zenith is a team that got invited from these two teams, and uh, the qualified team was Neolution. And we'll see which one of these two teams makes it through to the quarterfinals. There is only one chance for these two teams, so at least a best out of three chance, but it's single elimination. So once you lose the best out of three, you're out and you're no, you're no longer coming back, unless you are in season three. But, you know, that's uh, far away from now. Uh, Zenith already taking a sanctuary into the Radiant jungle. Nobody of the Radiant is actually there though. We looks like we're gonna have an aggressive trial and coming off from the Illusion as well, and that will mean that we might actually just have Kalinx, you know, very safe, maybe walking with this creep wave. Being up against that aggressive trial lane. We'll see. We'll see how they deal with this. I think as soon as Zenith realizes it's not an oh, not a trial lane down here, they might contest the trial lane on top. Um, not sure if they actually have a hero that can deal with the trial lane. I mean, they have a Dox here that does fairly well. He will get XP, he Ooh, will get a bit that's, of farm. That's not possible. Oh, win rate. Sorry, I was actually thinking of votes. Like, this doesn't votes, make 100%. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Well, Earthshaker Visage. Higher win rate, but less uh, testing grounds, I guess. I'm gonna see if they can do justice to that 76%. I really thought it was voice is like what? No, that's not possible. Music getting our statsman getting the math wrong. That would be funny, but yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. This plot seeker pickup. It's quite interesting. Um, I think it's really nice. He has a really long silence. Uh, it's like nine seconds on level yeah. four, which is really nice, especially against Weaver, who likes to use time lapse Shikuchi just to be really mobile and dodge most spells and stuff. You have to be careful though, because you do give him extra attack damage. Exactly. And, and that's the Weaver edge. likes that as well. So it's uh, it's a risky business. Zenith really looking for Zenith level 1 kill here so desperately? Yeah, well they won't find anything. They place a ward, aggressive ward here. But 
And they leave the docks here solo here, so yeah, looks like it's going to be a safe trail in for them after all. And I expect Yamate to be in the mid lane because he's saving up, well, I at least expect him to because he's... Yeah, and then the Darkseer on the off lane would make sense. It's a Definitely. shame that x doesn't have the nice set that the Darkseer in the previous game had, but we'll forgive him for this time. And the rune goes to the bottom lane, it's a haste rune for the Darkseer. Oh, uh, this is really annoying for Klinks, but especially if he spots him out now. And he did. He's, he, I, I think he should have seen him. But, yeah. Top lane, pull camp already blocked. I guess they... do they have sentry? Yeah, this sentry is on freedom. And as you mentioned, usually you want solo experience on the Bloodseeker and on this trial lane. Let's see how far he can actually go. Yeah, Because okay. their trial lane is not that strong. They can only play defensive, I think, Zenith that is. Not sure how much killing potential they have. No, and I mean, they can, uh, like, uh, like nice stats, by the way. 22% only for Neolution, but I have faith. Zenith is a team that either does really well or can be really crappy. We'll see what uh, this game brings with their Bloodseeker, especially since, I mean, with the camp blocked, their supports are not going to get any extra experience um, from those neutrals. It means they will have to get experience from the lane. It means that they will take experience from Ice Ice Ice's Bloodseeker, and that's not something that you want to have happen when you're a Bloodseeker, because... So you already decided he needs levels. Yeah, he really does. And uh, Freedom has to be careful. Yeah, and now he basically gave away a creep and didn't get the other one. So pulling like this is not really that effective, only for one lane and or one wave. And now they will actually be pushing. And now I'm not sure how, yeah, how much Dennis is going to get out of this lane. Can they pull this once more? Perhaps they can. Oh yeah, yeah they, they do. can. They do nicely done. Very nicely yeah. done. In the meantime, we have XY just tower skipping the creeps here, making sure that he gets everything there. All last hit, so that will be the one that we'll see on top of the last hit charts, no doubt about that. In the meantime, on the mid lane, we have got Yamate already out of mana, of course. He's not going to be having the freedom to throw axes anymore. But uh, he is 5 to 4, Leo sitting on 2 to 5. So actually, Yamate getting ahead here top lane might have some action because Nyx Assassin, just turned level 2, will not get an impale off because there is a Fisher and that will be first blood, goes the way of ice. Uh, I have to excuse myself for doubting their kill potential yes. because that was a beautiful fissure. It fissure. was. Uh, it was just amazing. And I mean, in the casting animation from the Nyx Assassin. Yeah, exactly. To be fair, Nyx Assassin was kind of out of position. Yes. Um, but yeah, still great uh, usage of that one. Especially the silence. I mean, they expected the carapace to come out, but there was none. There wasn't time for it, so. Silence really strong on level one. Six seconds. That's crucial. Yeah, I. Yeah, first blood. It goes away of the Earthshaker, by the way. So support gets this. Uh, gets the uh, gold. So, boots of speed for ice. I, yeah, I'm gonna really... be so confused. I don't like that they named themselves ice both. Like ice, ice, icy does have a number one. The only reason name. that is is because Valve is friendly and is making you at least see a difference. That's not oh, something really? he did himself. Oh. Oh. If there's two of the same name in one game, one will get a one in front of it. Random. Never had that. I've never seen that. I've been in so. games before where other people were named Cheever as well, and it happened. And it actually gave me the one. That's stupid. I'm the original one. <laughs> but yeah, that's indeed confusing. Um, well, better than just having a smiley oh, for another name, Fisher I Spike Carap is still going to be there, though, but they knew that. Silas is still up on there. There's going to be a soul assumption by Freedom soon. And that's going to be another kill going the way of Ice. This time, Ice, 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 as Ice himself will uh, run from the Weaver and will actually be safe. It will be the Weaver that will get uh, forced back. He won't die, but he'll, uh, he'll lose a bit of time there. Maybe he's going to go try to go back. Nope, gets denied. Freedom on the ball. Another kill so for Zenith. And actually, oh, he's... Another Grave Chill. Yeah, yeah. Grave Chill. Uh, he can't kill for, go, go for the kill. Um, I gotta question this Weaver's skill build. He put one point in the swarm, which I, in general, the swarm is quite nice to have. But I think one point in Gemini attack is a lot of damage early on. It's an extra attack. Yep, it is. <laughs> That's the whole point of having it. But it oh. is, uh, yeah, it is questionable to get it at level two rather than at level uh, three or four. But I guess they, they were trying to go for more, uh, well, needing less damage with the extra or armor diminishing with the bugs. Oh, that's true. That's you true. need less attacks then. But it is, I guess it's a personal preference. I deny Slyly. 
He's got a Bacillus now as well, so extra armor for himself and for his team. While he reduces the armor of the rest of the squad. It might help out. But so far, their aggressive trial and not really working out. And Zenith's aggressive trial and working out brilliantly. They have a level 4 Earthshaker, level 4, or sorry, 5 Bloodseeker. And Freedom is level 4 even as well. And in the meantime, the trial lane on the side of the Illusion is level 3, level 2, and level 2. That's a major difference. Speaking oh, of major difference. Roars, oh. middle, Leo, you're dead, I think. One axis. No, he doesn't have the mana for it. Leo lives, but he has to back out. Because that one astral imprisonment. If he had that, yeah, you know, if he had those mana points, that would have been an axe. Yeah, that yeah. would have been a kill, and that, well, I guess that's OD for you, but. Already Yamate showing the potential of a Beastmaster here, and of course, with this level 6, he doesn't need to be sticking in this mid lane. His rotation can also create some opportunities for his team. Even though they're not doing bad on any of the lanes, I mean, Klinks is having a good time farming there as well. He's actually second highest on last hits, and it's almost impossible to get on par with the XY in terms of last hits, because and he is getting uh, neutrals, maybe, that camp. Uh, although he has a bit of bad luck that he've got, he's got mud golems. But and he's getting, of course, the, the, all the creeps on the lane. Yeah, but Clinks is helping out him out by eating those mud golems oh, with his friendly. ultimate. So Radiant's yeah, it really is. is under attack. Yeah, but that's a yeah, that's a that's a very farmed Clinks as well. So that's gonna be something that the illusion is gonna be happy about. The OD is doing okay-ish in terms of last hits, though not as far ahead as I think he should be. He is 21 for 16, nice amount of the nice. But Beastmaster 19 last hits for eight, so not doing that bad up against an OD, a lane that he, in all seriousness, or seriousness, should be losing. Yeah, especially when you look at those denies, you expect, okay, there should be a big gap in terms of experience, but they're actually in par. Yeah. So, um, Yamati definitely doing a good job in this lane. Um, you did mention that Klings does have quite a nice amount of farm. He does, but he bought a Sol Ring out of that. I'm not sure why. Um, so because, I mean, nice. I guess for his ultimate, so you can spam it out basically, because as a clings when you ha have to last it under your tower, you're constantly using searing arrows and you will be out of mana quite often, but yeah, he's still laying his orchid, orchid by quite a bit. He even went for treads now. Usually you see even clings go for naked orchid or at least only naked boots or uh, brown boots and then orchid. Yeah. But going for treads and soaring now early on puts him a bit far a bit behind. Yeah, just saying, uh, I guess, that he is okay with having the laning phase being delayed a little bit. I'm not sure how long he can delay it for, though, because we know that Zenith is an aggressive team, and with the uh, with the roar on board on Yamate, we might see him rotating soon. As uh, we have got maybe a bit of a potential here for Nail Lucian on this top lane, because they're very far out towards the tower. There's an oh, impale. bottom lane. Oh, they are going to go for x -Y. He searches himself out. One more hit, and that's going to be giving a kill to the Klinks. Nicely done by Shoti. Is it not showtime? Yeah, I what guess it's for? I'm not sure though. Impale, showtime. Ice, might be in some trouble, but goes for the Weaver first and gets the kill, therefore gets some extra HPs back. And that's gonna be giving another kill to Ice 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 Bloodseeker. The second kill of the game. He's got 1k gold in his inventory, goes for the 4 staff, obviously. Yeah, and Ice, Ice, his farm is looking really nice. I guess he's going for 4 staff, he has a Ring of Region already. Um, sitting on 1.2k gold, and oh, another TP coming to top. Beastmasters here though, they have to be really careful. Yeah, the tier 1 tower will probably drop. And this Beastmaster, even though he doesn't really- well actually, he's back to his full mana pool, he's gotta be happy with that. One roar away from getting a kill. Unless he roars up on the Nyx Assassin, because the Spike Carapace is there. But they're not even gonna have to deal with that. They've got also a Visage level 6, by the way, so he managed to uh, to get those birds. Familiars, I'll be able to help out. And I've stunned up a couple of creeps, but... Yeah, that's gonna be the first tower down. Zenith definitely uh, dominating this game so far in terms of control. Where happens? What is in their command? Yeah, and the bottom tower is also fairly close to falling. One or two rotations coming out, and this should be an easy tier 1 tower. Um, Darkseer, though, has to be careful. I mean, he has his mech now, but still, there's... Rubik and Klinks in the neighborhood. They're just staring down at him. Yeah, they already killed him off once. Exactly. And now that he knows that the, that the Rubik is there, it might be a bit more tougher, but... Uh, actually, Rubik level 4 also, but we'll see if he is actually going to be going back there. He rotates middle. His own team is already there to try and go for uh, for the OD. Just a roar needed. It is uh, it is there. Yamate can use it, uh, but does he want to is the question. I don't think he wants to. Now, he has to. Okay. 
Now he didn't have to anymore because the Dark Soul yeah. came there, but he still <laughs> used it anyway. That was really... At first, yeah, it, use it, then, yeah. You know. Yeah, it's like he doesn't want to use it, but in the end, he kind of has to. Uh, or he had to at start until XY came around, but... Yeah. Oh well. But it doesn't have that long of no, cooldown. It doesn't. Like has 70 seconds? 70? 70? Oh, 80 seconds, yeah. It's not too long, yeah. so... Oh, Kling, so he's invisible, he's fine. We're taking that region. Oh, oh we're taking freedom instead. Freedom, you're dead. You're very dead. Look at that. Kling's just standing there. Gets a Fisher. Nice regen room denied by the familiar. Oh, the courier. And the courier just hanging around because, you know, just looking at the bloodbath. That's what Elgato does. Likes to see blood flowing. Okay. Showtime. Not going for Orchid. He has a Yasha. Interesting. Going Definitely for more of a hard build. carry build, perhaps. Yeah, it looks like it. And it, I guess it seems to pay off because the amount of damage he just dished out yeah. that was insane. Like, yeah. I mean, that was Visage on the floor in no time. Freedom exactly. having, uh, I mean, level 6. And of course, he still has the familiars, and that's half of his hero, so it's okay ish. But it's uh, still pretty painful to see just your health go down so fast. And you can't do anything about it either. And even if the mechanism was around him with the uh, Darkseer, I don't think they would have made a change either. We're gonna see bottom them rotating right bottom, and also. but yeah, Nail Lucian also here. They're looking for a fight, and they can get it as well. Central Ward already goes down, the slow is there, Kalinks already gets forced back. Will there be a roar? No, there won't be. And comes the Fate Bolt, the Impale misses. Surge away from Freedom, we'll be fine, but they go back in. They need that roar to initiate with. They now have their entire team here. Zenith with five people in the bottom lane. There's also five people in the forest of Neolution. Just the Kalinks having to get back here. The roar as from Prismant will keep the target safe. And still gonna be an Eclipse dropping on top of that. Rubik will die. Nice three man impale though. But the mechanism on the Darkseer doing work there. And it is Neolution that gets picked apart. Kalinks still able to pick up the Earthshaker. But now gets chased down. Will probably get silenced as well if Ice gets it off. There goes the silence. And that should be one Kalinks down. Axes, is it gonna be enough? One more hit, there we go. Ice with the kill, and that's gonna be Ice. Four staffing himself forward, not gonna be able to kill off the Nyx Assassin anymore, he knows it. But in the end, there were four people dead. Weaver died there, didn't he? Yes, he did. Yeah, he did, he did die. So four people and a tier one tower. Yep, and they that's... only lost their Earth Shaker for that. That's not a bad sacrifice for Ice. I think they'll trade that at any day. It was a really good fight for them, and I completely forgot about the interaction between um, the rupture from Bloodseeker in the vacuum. The poor, poor, poor OD who was just pushed around. Vacuum, four staff, and then eventually he did. Yeah. So the rupture. Gonna see Zenith go for the Rosha? And they can, I mean, why not, right? They have got the medallion up on Freedom, so minus armor for the Roshan, always gonna be guaranteeing uh, a faster Roshan than normal. I know, Captain obviously strikes again. But uh, yeah, early Roshan for them, 13 minutes in. But they can do this, and with this, they can be even more aggressive than they already were. And even though Kalinx is still kinda scary, as soon as they got him on the run, at least, they're gonna, ha they're gonna be able to kill him. Yeah, he really needs a BKB. Yeah, um, he does. I mean, in general already, you need a BKB, uh, despite what you build. Uh, if it's an Orchid, you also need a BKB afterwards, but in this scenario, he really needs it. There's so much to lock him down. Even the silence hurts him a lot because he can't use the invis, he can't use the searing arrows. So, BKB has to be the purchase now. Yeah, we're gonna see a pincer here, though. From behind, here comes the Klingza from oh, the front. The is coming. Oh, and the courier is Actually, no, he doesn't get the courier anymore. Courier flies away. Or at least, flies safe. Surge up for the Beastmaster, looking for a roar, can't find anybody, and Kalinks actually went back into his own jungle because he found that to be the safer route. I don't blame him, Sentry Wards are there just in case he shows himself. Observers as well. Zenith just laying down the pressure, laying down the law, the net worth doesn't lie, we have got, and Bloodseeker, and Darkseer, and even Beastmaster doing very well. Still the Kalinks at least keeping up, but that's the only one right now, even the OD not able to keep up. OD, a hero that drops behind real fast if others get ahead of him, purely because he doesn't is, isn't able to keep up with his intellect gain. He doesn't have the mechanism up just yet. Fisher locks up on two, there's a roar. Astro Imprisonment saves the Rubik for a little while longer, but I'm thinking he's still gonna be a goner. And that's indeed gonna be the case. Still, Earthshaker goes down on the back end because in comes the Klinks, able to pick him up. Good pick up there. Mechanism helps keep the rest of Zenith alive, but they're getting chased down. The silence already up on Weaver, and that means he hurts like hell. But 
Not able to find a kill with it, unfortunately for him. It's a one for one trade, something that Zenith doesn't appreciate this time because... I mean, that's not a favorable trade for them. Yeah, they invested quite heavily in that. I mean, they used the rupture, they used the roar, but the nice imprisonment by OD kind of delayed the impact from those spells. Yeah. Uh, kind of took away the momentum they had. But, yeah, it's still good. F it was definitely a good fight for G7, especially since Klinks, I think, got the kill. Yeah, he got yes. the kill on the Earthshaker, so yeah. his farm is looking quite well, and he's uh, looking at the ice. Yeah, let's see if we can get him. If we would have an Orchid, that would be the kill, but then again, he might not have been, not have been able to do as much damage as he did. But he doesn't yeah. uh, He doesn't get a kill. Ice, ice, ice. We'll be safe. We'll be forced back to base, though. He kind of can't afford to sit around much longer. Maybe he can get some last hits on the neutrals to get some HP back up, but if he shows himself again, Killings might just go on the hunt and this time actually kill him off. Nail Lucian, though, they know that something needs to change. They don't have an Assassin that is level 6 yet, so he can't go out hunting yet with the Killings. That would have been, of course, a brilliant combination to have. They do have a mechanism. Yeah, and this is a really uh, important item to have. Um, then again, the OD really lacks intelligence. His mid lane against Beastmaster, oh. Do they spot the Clinks? There's the sentry. Yeah, Roar, Clinks, gets us from imprisonment. We've seen that before. Sentry goes down again because two sentries is better than one. But nobody dies. By the way, this is the same person placing two sentries, just saying. Yeah, that, I guess a misclick. No, I'm, I'm guessing like, oh, I mean, just want to have the sentry a little bit more upwards. Just because he could. It does give double the vision. He's Somewhat. A little, a little bit more into this uh, area. Yeah. Perhaps. But uh, but yeah, no kill. You roar used again. Smoke used by Zenith. That was a smoke gank, of course. A failed one at that. At the same time, Nailution also went for uh, for a gank and couldn't end up. Uh, couldn't find anybody. Blinks walks himself through a couple of sentry wards. So XY is going to be extra careful. XY who's got himself a ghost scepter. Fifteen hundred gold to boot. And the next yeah, assassin is still at level 6. Rubik is level 6 though. And again, there's really nice spells to steal. He hasn't gotten in range of uh, anyone yet to steal something, but in general you kind of want the Fisher or the Raw. Um, just yeah. because you can be the initiator then. And in Zenith, they have a few tanky heroes, but if you initiate with the Raw and the Bloodseeker, for example, he's going to be falling quite quickly. He's rather squishy, unlike the Dark Zero or the Beastmaster. Yeah, I, I kind of think that Zenith has got this time strain that they're under. Because if you look at their heroes, and you look at the Illusion heroes, and you think like late game potential, it's gonna be the Illusion that should be, in theory, coming out ahead in terms of what kind of heroes they have. So this pressure that Zenith is supplying is really necessary to keep them in it. We have a surge up on the Beastmaster, maybe looking for a roar from the high ground. Pressure on the tier 2 is still going on. If they can't find heroes, they might as well just take down the tower. Fortification is at least there. Ice with the mana boots. Looking for and a fissure as well, but none just yet. Yeah, and Ice is Ice as the side thingy just shows. He still has the Aegis for one minute. He really has to make use of it. Yeah. Otherwise, it would be wasted ages, basically. Yeah, there's a gem, by the way, now up on freedom. So no more killings that's gonna surprise Ice from the back from the back end and kill off the Earth Shaker before anything happens. They take the tower and they back off afterwards. And they're just gonna rotate through the next tower. Just give themselves extra advantage while they can. They've got the gold graph in their favor, 12k experience graph. Not as much in favor as there's not that many kills on the board yet. Uh, Neo Lucian doing a good job at trying to prevent kills from happening, and they can't really fight as we have seen but it's still about 7k in favor of Zenith and in terms of levels we see that mostly back in the supports and now a level 6 upon the Nyx that's nice but that's only just now and of course uh, Klinks is trying to keep that experience graph as close as possible with him being level 14 oh vacuum up to the high ground Rubik able to at least do something but down he probably will go there we go slight overkill but they really had slight to overkill the yeah. There was a massive overkill. It's like yeah, with sugar coating it, but yeah, yeah definitely overkill. And I mean, now they don't have a roar for another sixty seconds. It's really a short. We already said it. it's a short duration. I get it, but still, it's it's awkward. Yeah, they do get a tower out of it, and G seven is not reengaging because Collins is on the bottom lane, yeah. so it doesn't hurt them at all right now. Um, True. Unless there's going to be a team fight in the next forty seconds. 
in the meantime, I says Icy picks up his relic, and I guess he's preparing for, you know, maybe even late game because with the radiance, of course, he can fight a lot or farm a lot more efficiently. Yeah, we have. But it's got also just a nuisance. BKB, uh, almost up on Klings in the meantime. Yeah, the radiance ready on Bloodseeker. I mean, I. I want to comment on it, but it's ice, ice, ice. What can we say, right? If it works, it works. Yeah. And he normally even knows how to make things work, and it is, it is a recommended item. It really is. Uh, I mean, he can hunt down those heroes, and general in team fights be really nuisance to all of them. And um, looking on G7 side, they have rather squishy heroes. I mean, Klings, Weaver, Nyx, Assassin, and Rubik. That, uh, even the OD, they're really, yeah. I think nobody's actually more HP than Klinks, and Klinks has like 1k HP. So they're really squishy, and does 50 damage per second, is it? Or 55 now? Um, no, it's 50. So yeah, it really hurts a lot. It's not too bad of an item, I guess. Yeah, OD is having a tough time though. Like his net worth is, is still higher than that of the Weaver, which is of course nice. But he so needs that intellect, and he is just building no talismans to keep up. It's, yeah, uh, it's kind of painful. And th this last outer tower now picked up as well is going to put Zenith in even more control of the map, even more control than they already had. And I'm expecting them just, you know, farm up until the next Roshan is th is there, and then just take the Aegis and go high ground. Yeah, their map control currently is really incredible. Um, just taking away all the space that G7 wants to farm. Um, only Weaver and Klings actually dare to go outside the base that far. And even they have to be careful because, as we mentioned, there's a gem up on Yamate, so each one of them could be, an, well, could be killed quite easily. And Weaver especially, I mean, he doesn't have any farm whatsoever. He has Treads and Bracer. He really wanted HP, but... Yeah, yeah, no Lincolns for him. No Lincolns for him anytime soon. I don't think it should be his first item anymore either. Uh, it's quite far away, and he just needs to have something that will allow him to fight... Maybe even a Yasha or something like that, Sanjin. Yeah, I, th I think a Man uh, Mantisar would be nice. Uh, also, disabling that silence from the f uh, from the Bloodseeker. G7, just stuck, in stuck inside their base. They can't do anything, they can't farm anywhere safely. We have got Klinks, the only one that tries to farm somewhere safely. By the way, oh, it's nighttime. That's why the flowers look sad when there's nighttime. I thought it was when they were about to run out, but it's just at nighttime. Okay, fair enough. But nice. <laughs> Warding coming off from Zenith. I mean, no wards up at all for G7. They are in the dark. The only vision that they have is the creep waves, and the creep waves are not really pushing out very far because they're keeping uh, Zenith is keeping them in check. Kalinx is giving some vision, but then again, he is also the one that can feel fairly safe. He's got that BKB. He can be invisible, and there is of course the gem. But yeah, he thinks he's okay with the movement speed that he gets. And the rest can only move if they're together, and they're gonna be together, they're gonna smoke up. Roshan is being taken at the moment, I think G7 should be aware of this. If they have the timer, they should have yeah, the I timer. Yeah, I think they should have the timer, and they should contest this. They can't give away free Roshan at this point, because the Aegis will mean that Zenith can go high ground. But at the same time, they have to be really careful, because... Yeah, what... Are they actually going to get there in time? That's the question. Well, we're gonna see it. I don't think so. They're, they're waiting too long. And if they take a fight right now, they wouldn't win it. Yeah, and they initiated on an illusion, so... Zenith knows it, and they smoked up themselves now. Yeah. So, oh, they will spot out the Klinks. On the chase. Klinks. The gem is in the Beastmaster. He's looking for the roar! Oh, it's so... You saw him look at... Like, he stopped to cast twice, but... It's just not fast enough, even with the Surge. Yeah, and even with the Aghanims, he wasn't in range. Yeah. And of course, that's uh, that's one of the massive reasons why you pick up that Aghanims, just for the range and the ro roar. Um, I mean, the cooldown is nice, but I have been told that the range is more important. Yeah, the, the range cooldown. is definitely more important. Um, being able to initiate from such a long range, sometimes you don't even expect it. Suddenly you get roared to the face and immediately you're dead. Yeah. Um, pick, up a pick up a blink dagger on top of that and yeah. No one on G7 will feel safe. Yeah. Oh, Leo might be in some trouble. The Rapture is already there. Nice Fisher vacuum into that as well. Eclipse comes down, but doesn't really do anything. Rubik is the one to go down. Leo goes down next. Roar upon the Weaver. He gets picked off, and that's going to be three dead. 
and two to go. Still, Colleen's doing quite some work up on Yamate. He's able to pick him off. He's turned on his BKB. He is soloing this team right now. He might be able to get the Aegis. He is getting the Aegis. Gonna get picked up for it still, though. And it looks like we are gonna see a team wipe. There we go. Nice effort from the Kalings. He took down one, took down an Aegis, all by himself. But in the end, his team will still be seeing uh, the fight lost. One of the upsides of uh, G7 being so low level is that they are almost up again. So, Let's might be able to defend at least a little bit. But we'll see. Yeah. But they don't really have much to offer at this point. I mean, the big team fight spell, the Sanity Eclipse, deals almost no damage to none of to any of those heroes. I mean, even the or even the heroes that are not intelligence based are not going to be, be scratched by that. Yeah, it's, um, it's kind of sad. Yeah, it really is. But Zenith backs off, so they did accomplish something. Um, Kling stealing a lot of damage, but. I mean, this item build, I guess, works out for him so far, but I think he could have contributed a lot more if he had gotten for the Orchid. Um, he went more for an AFK farming build, and, and he should have yeah. been maybe more invested in his team earlier on, you I, right? I, I agree. I think so too, because um, if he had gone out for ganks or pick off the Earthshaker, freedom more, um, he could have gotten himself a little bigger advantage. I agree. Zenith, uh, though. Keeping this game in check, 20k gold in favor for them, 12k experience, almost 13k actually, over 13k with this. So, looking good for them, and G7, if they still want to win this game, what do you think they should do? Apart from I not die right now, really never look. mind, Roar, <laughs> Weaver, dead Weaver. Yeah, I was just gonna say, go for pickoffs and play secure, um, just go for secure pickoffs like go out with like two or three heroes and they did look to get the uh, Bloodseeker on top but yeah they're probably going to lose a tier 3 tower at this point yeah which is surprising that it didn't happen before it was a team wipe but Zenith uh, prioritizing killing off heroes over killing off buildings the way that we know them of course we've got a hex up on XY right now as well I mean, items are, are looking pretty stacked on Zenith's side. We've got Ghost Scepters for everybody, so if Klinks comes around, everybody has a Ghost Scepter, apart from the Bloodseeker, who feels pretty comfortable about himself. It is, of course, Ice Ice Ice, no surprise there. But, um, but yeah, there's a Rapture, four stuff forward. Nyx Assassin already dead. That's one down. Fisher locks down the Rubik. Soul Assumption, that's gonna be him down. In comes uh, XY actually taking quite a bit of damage. The roar up on the Weaver again. Weaver goes down again. Eclipse gets dropped, but doesn't really do any damage as we already discussed. That wouldn't happen. And that's going to be the tier three tower going down. Kalinks, by the way, he is uh, farming. Yeah, he knows he can't. If he goes in right now, he's going to get killed. Um, if they do, if they really do want to still continue fighting this one, they have to just rely that they rely on the fact that Zenith is going to retreat now, and maybe. He's Maybe Showtime can pick off a support or two, but it doesn't look like Zenith is going to retreat. They're going to go in middle. There's really Zenith's game to uh, to throw here. If they want to lose it, they can. But otherwise, there's not much chance left for G7. Yeah, the full BKB up on Ice, by the way. Um, hasn't used it so far, but when he does, what? What, what kind of input damage is going to get to him? Because Weaver doesn't deal any damage whatsoever. Um, OD, he yeah. He doesn't want to get impaled or telekinesis. Yeah, that that as well. Yeah, that's it. He's just... Let's see, Zenith, they're gonna go in right now. Surge is up. Surge was up, okay, they're not gonna go in. Showtime, he's going for the career. Lynx doesn't get... DOES GET Gato! Elgato goes down for the second time, but in the meantime, his team goes down for it. We have already the roar used. That's gonna be nice. Rubik's Stealing Rapture able to kill off the Earthshaker with that one. So it's a one for one trade so far, but Weaver in a lot of trouble getting silenced up. As Throne Prisman will keep him safe for a little while longer. In comes Yamate, has got the axes, but Weaver should be just fine. Or no, he's not fine at all. He is out. An ice, ice, ice with the triple kill on his Bloodseeker. He did use the BKB that fight. In the meantime, we have Nyx Assassin trying to go for freedom. Notices that he gets some company, so he has to run again. 
Soul Assumption coming in, and that is Yamate in the end with the last hit, and it's gonna be Zenith that will take their prize, the tier 3 tower. GG gets cold. This was, of course, only game number one of this best of three. And, uh, I mean, no surprise, the favorites end up getting out ahead on this one. It is the round of 16 that we see from the playoff brackets. Single elimination, best of three brackets for the AMD Premier League. We are in season two. And we're gonna see the second game, seeing if G7 can force out a third game or if uh, Zenith is gonna make this 2-0. Uh, oh, Ice 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 the troll. Killing AFK people, it's really brave. Yeah, but overall just convincing performance by Zenith. I mean, the Bloodseeker pick did seem weird, and to be quite honest, I think they could've won this game with any other carry. Um, not sure how much actually the Bloodseeker or the hero itself was really important yeah, in this I game. Agree. But uh, overall, still convincing performance. Yeah, the mid lane not working out for G7 is one that can be frowned upon. They could have played it differently, but I, I think, like regardless of hero picks, they got uh, they got outplayed. Let's see if they can make it work for them better in the previous uh, or in the next game. As we will uh, find that out in just a moment. Stick around, and we will have game number two of Zenith taking on G7 in just a moment.